Welcome to our video on bond valuation. In this video, we will cover key concepts related to bonds and solve a few problems as well. So let's begin with the key features of bonds. So the best thing is to really show this on a timeline with relevant cash flows. So let's say you purchase a bond today at time zero for a certain price, right? So the timeline of the bond will look something like this. Depending on the bond's maturity, you might hold it for a number of years, right? So for example, let's suppose the bond has five years to maturity, okay? So what happens in this case is that you pay the purchase price today. So let's say a figure like $980. And at the maturity, at the end of five years, you get back the face value, so let's say, thousand dollars okay some bonds will make uh, coupon payments in the meantime so for example either each year or sometimes every six months you will receive coupon regular coupon payments so let's say you receive it every six months so then instead of putting five here at the end i will put here 10 because we have 10 periods because in each year we have two coupon payments so therefore we have 10 coupon payments in total. So the length of each period here is six months. Okay. And let's suppose the bond makes a regular coupon payment of, um, let's say, uh, $5. Okay. So this is the bonds. Well, this will depend on the coupons so the, sorry, the bond's coupon rate, and it will make a coupon payment at the, at the very end as well. So for example, if the uh, coupon rate is 1%, okay, so this means that each year, the, uh, the total coupon you receive will be 1% of the total face value. So it's $10. But because it's semi-annual coupon payments, each six months, you will get five pounds. So in total, within a year, you get 10 pounds in total. So that's why we have five pounds in each six months. Okay, this is dependent on the coupon rate. So we talked about the maturity of the bond. We talked about its price, its face value, which you receive at the very end, its coupon. And the final important concept is yield to maturity. So you can think of this as the bond's return if you hold it until the end. Right? So it's a bit like, you know, in stocks, we talk about stock returns. In bonds, we can talk about yields. Okay. And similarly, remember, in uh, stocks, we talk about dividend payments. In uh, bonds, we talk about coupon payments. You can also have bonds that do not make any coupon payments. They are called zero coupon bonds. All right. Now that we understand how bonds look like, let's look at our first problem. Where, we'll, where we will try to compute the price of a coupon bond. So what we have here is a five-year coupon bond. So this is the face value, okay? And the coupon rate is 5%, okay? So this means that, and it says semi-annual coupon payments, right? So this means that the annual coupon payment will be 5% times $1,000, which is uh, 50, so $50, isn't it? Yeah. So $50 in total per year or $25 every, every six months. And the yield to maturity of this bond is computed as 6%. And it says that this is APR, so annual percentage rate with semi-annual compound. This is a common way to quote yields. So this means that Again, over the year, over the entire year, the bond yields 6% or 3% every six months. Okay. So let's see how we are going to find the price of this bond. Basically, we need to compute two things. We need to compute the present value of the coupon payments. So this is the present value of the coupon payments. And we need to compute the present value of the face value we will uh, get at the very end. So to make it clearer, again, let's show all the cash flows. 
on a timeline. When solving this sort of problems, I will always recommend you to draw the timeline. So we are starting from zero and going all the way to year five. And because we have semi-annual payments, we have 10 periods. So for example, if it was annual coupons, this would be simply five rather than 10. So according to the coupon rate, every six months, I will get $25 for 10 periods. So this is the present value of that. And this is a regular stream of cash flow. In fact, it is an annuity, right? We have different, we have other tutorials where we cover annuities. So if you are unsure what it is, you can check them out. And the term you see in the parenthesis here is simply the application of the annuity formula. So the general annuity formula looks like this, C over R minus C over R times one plus R to the power T. So C is the magnitude of the cash flow, which is 25 here. R is the discount rate. So make sure not to make a mistake here. The yield is 6%. So this is the discount rate we will use, but this is quoted annually, right? Whereas we have semi-annual compounding in this case. So that's why I divide it by two and I'm using 3% every six months, okay? Remember again, this is six month intervals, okay? So again, R is 3% here, here, and we have one plus R here, and T is the number of periods, which is 10, right? So again, if we had annual coupons, we would use five here, and then we could also use the yield to maturity directly as 6%, right? But we are working with semi-annual uh, periods, okay, six month periods. So this gives us the present value of the cash flows. But we are not done yet because we shouldn't forget about the present value of the face value we will receive at the very end when the bond matures. Okay. So this last term simply is the present value of that. We are basically discounting this cash flow for 10 years at a rate of 3% per six months. And if you do the calculation, you can find the price of this bond as $957.35. Now let's talk a little bit more about bond prices. And I would like to distinguish between three categories, which depends on the bond's yield to maturity and coupon rate. So for example, if a bond's yield to maturity happens to exactly equal its coupon rate, so for example, if they are both 6% with semi-annual compounding, we say that the bond is trading at par, okay? And what that means is that the price of the bond in this case, so let's say price of the bond in this case equals the face value. So this is always mathematically true. And sometimes you, you hear that the bond trades at a discount, okay? So if you hear that a bond is trading at a discount, this occur, occurs when the yield to maturity exceeds the coupon rate. And the reason we say it is trading at a discount is that in this case, price is less than the face value, okay? And actually this makes intuitive sense because let's keep coupon rate as fixed. Let's say it is 6% and initially the yield to maturity is 6% as well. Now, if I increase the yield to maturity from six to let's say 8%, I'm discounting all the cash flows more heavily, and that should reduce the price, okay? And the price will fall relative to the face value, making the uh, bond trade at a discount. And the final category is that the bond can trade at a premium. So this occurs when the yield to maturity is relatively low compared to its coupon rate. In other words, the bond is paying a relatively high coupon compared to its yield. So such bonds are valuable. So in that case, the price will exceed the face value, okay? Now let's see a practical example of this as well, which is our next problem. 
So let's uh, talk about discounts versus premiums. So we will look at the same bond in problem one, but we will only change one feature of it. So everything else will stay the same. So keeping all else constant, let's increase the coupon rate from 5% to 7%. And let's see how that affects the price. Without making any calculations intuitively, we should expect that the price will increase, right? Keeping yield to maturity and everything else the same, because now the coupons are going to be higher, right? So there's more, there's bigger cash flows, which is desirable, and they should increase the value of this bond. So remember, originally we had this price. Uh, so this was the case when the yield was 6%, right? Compounded semi-annually, that's why we had 3%. And the coupon rate was 5%. So yield to maturity, coupon. And note that the yield is higher than coupon. So that's why this bond is trading at a discount. So the value of the bond is less than its face value. Why? Because I'm discounting it uh, at, a higher than, high, at a higher rate than its coupon rate. But now I'm making a small change. I'm replacing 5% with 7%. So as I said, we expect the price to increase. And in fact, the bond will now trade at a premium, right? So if I increase the coupon rate to 7%, what will be my coupon payments? So basically, I will get 7% times $1,000 of coupon payments each year, so $70 in total, or two coupon payments of $35 every six months. So this will increase to 35, and this will increase to 35 as well. So the bond price will also increase. If you do the calculations, you'll find that it increases to $1,042 and 65 cents. As you can see, this price is about the face value, and now the bond is trading at a premium. Previously, at a, a coupon rate of 5%, it was trading at a discount. So if the coupon rate was higher at 7%, it would trade at a premium because now the coupon rate exceeds the yield to maturity. Okay, the last key concept I would like to talk about is interest rate sensitivity. So in general, bond prices move in opposite direction compared to prices compared to uh, interest rates. So let's call this, sorry, I didn't write it very nicely, but I think you'll get it, interest rates. In the sense that when interest rates in an economy tend to go up, the bond prices will tend to go down, okay? So this is because we are basically increasing the yield, right? And therefore discounting the cash flows more heavily, we would expect the prices to go down as well. So there's an inverse relationship between prices and interest rates. And different bonds will have different sensitivities to interest rate changes. Some bonds will be more sensitive and it will depend on the cash flow structure of the bonds. And this is a concept called duration, okay? So the duration basically captures a bond's sensitivity in terms of its price or value to changes in interest rates. So let me clarify this with an example, which is the final example in this tutorial. So we will again consider the same bond in problem one, right? This time we will only change the yield. Again, we are keeping everything else the same, but making just one change by increasing the yield from 6% to 7%. Again, first let's think what will happen to the bond price. Because the yield has increased, I'm discounting cash flows more heavily, so the bond price should depress, right? So it should go down. So let's see exactly what will happen. So this was the original price. Now, if the yield becomes 7% per year, it is 3.5% every six months. So I need to add this five here, 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 and here. 
So as you can see, every time the denominator is affected, so the bond price will actually go down and I can tell the exact value, it will go down to $916.83. So you can feel free to verify this. So it is about, roughly speaking, it's a $40 decline in the stock price as a result of the increase in the yield to maturity. So one percentage point increase in the yield to maturity decreases the stock price by $40. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this video. I hope you found it useful and looking forward to meet you in another video as well. Bye for now.